Azuku Midoriya. In a hero society full of people with quirks, other known as superpowers, Azuku was one that would have some ultimate power. A power that would surpass everybody you could possibly think of. But when that power comes, will it corrupt his mind? Will it certainly take over? Will him being the reincarnation of such a powerful character by the name of Rimuru Tempest affect his mind? Affect the person Azuku is? Well, that's what we'll find out in this What If Deku fanfiction. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back. And we are here with actually a My Hero Academia What If fanfiction. Some of you really wanted it. Some of you were impartial about it, but I tried a compromise. It's been a month. I've took a little break off of it, but I know a lot of you still want Deku What Ifs. So I decided I would do things that I would only enjoy in terms of, uh, oh, I like this idea, so I'm going to do it. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing solely, um, more or less. So if you come up with a really good idea, then I will most likely do it. But uh, as you can see, we are here and this is basically what if Deku was the reincarnation of Rimuru or Deku reincarnated as Rimuru Tempest. So if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like, sub and comment down below. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time and let's just get right into the what if. Let's get it. Azuku Midoriya was born. Born into a world full of heroes, villains, all alike. But everybody wanted one thing, and that was to be strong. That was to have an amazing quirk that would allow them to do various things and become, just like All Might, the number one hero. Azuku wanted the same thing. So at the age of four, when he went to the doctors and, let, and got his quirk analyzed, let's just say he was a happy boy. Yes, Miss Midoriya, it's a pleasure to see you. Um... We'll run some tests on your little boy here, and I'll get back to you at what we find. Azuku Midoriya, or Azuku, got his test run to see what quirk he currently has, and when he came out of the office, or the doctor's office, his mother heard some amazing news, that he had one of the strongest quirks that this doctor has ever seen. Yes, um, I don't know how to say this exactly. But his quirk is built up of various things. And when I say various, I mean various. He is somewhat like a slime. A transformation quirk in a way, but not just that. He has the ability to change his form, but he also has various skills. It seems he has a skill that gives him this m infinite information, mind accelerate, to basically analyze and assess things super quickly to basically create almost the out or almost anything out of nothing he's able to synthesize he's able to separate skill modify he's able to do so many things and on top of this that's not just it he has other things as well he has a storage within his body that is nothing like i've ever seen he has a, a this skill that basically is called predator it more or less uses his own body to absorb other things and learn various skills. His power? It could be infinite. I hope your boy is on the track to be a hero, because that's exactly what we need in this society. Wow. Are you serious? Azuku is that strong? No, definitely. He's definitely on the path to be a hero. Isn't that right? Azuku nods his head quickly and says that he definitely is and he would be happy to be a hero. He wants to be just like All Might. In which the doctor nods and says that he expected nothing less from someone as capable as him. So, that's what happens. He gets informed that he has insane potential and Azuku decides to head off back home with his mother once again. Once, once he heads back to school though, the next day, he begins to tell everybody about his quirk. But he explains that it's so confusing that he's like kind of like part slime and then he has various skills that he doesn't necessarily understand but he'll learn as he goes along but let's just say a lot of the kids there don't really believe him and they say that he might just have or that he just has a transformation cord because all azuku can do at the moment is turn into a slime a small slime that actually can sense various things around him but that's all he can transform into and they don't even find that cool they think it's kind of lame. 
nothing compared to like Bakugo's quirk where he can more or less just shoot explosions out of his hands. Like that is cool. So Azuku grows up throughout middle school more or less disliking or not really enjoying being around these other people. I wouldn't say disliking them. He's still that upbeat um, kid that he always was. But at the end of the day, they did make fun of him for basically just saying he has a transformation quirk and that he's not actually strong. In which, obviously, is not the case. But Azuku decides that he wouldn't argue about it. And even Bakugo, his so-called best friend, began to bully him for it. But obviously, Azuku being the cool-headed person he is, he doesn't really care. And this actually does frustrate Bakugo more and more at the fact that Bakugo doesn't like being looked down on, and that's just the fact of the matter. But with that said, Deku or Azuku just goes through life relatively easily. Yes, not everybody believes him, quote unquote, but after some time with basically like maybe like in gym classes and stuff, and they see that he's just smarter and stronger than practically everybody, and the fact that the more he's doing simple tasks, the better he's getting at them, let's just say he's like practically genius level intelligence, he actually doesn't have to really worry about much. And on top of this, he has a little voice in his head that will tell him everything he needs to know. This voice is more or less a unique skill that he has called Great Sage, or like a wise one type of ability, where he basically can think for himself, but it's like another person, an outer intelligence that's smarter than even him, and she thinks, or it, or whatever you want to call it, thinks for, for Azuku as well. So let's just say this made his life a lot easier. This then finally leads to their or close to their ending of middle school in which they have all these papers that get passed around by the teacher to basically write up where they or what they want to do but everybody shouts out that they want to be a hero like all might like every top hero they want to be the hero and go to a hero school in which the teacher says that that's exactly what he thought would happen Yes, and even Katsuki Bakugo and Azuku Midoriya, they're going to or want to try to go to UA. They definitely have great potential. Bakugo is second in the class and Azuku is first. And right when the teacher says this, a lot of people are kind of shocked. They know Azuku is smart and whatever, but they still didn't think that he was as smart as Bakugo. Frankly, they have a lot of bias toward Bakugo and that's blatantly obvious. But even with that said, Azuku keeps on trucking along and just ignoring all these haters for say. He knows the potential he has personally, and as thro obviously throughout the years, he's gained a decent idea of how to use a ton of his powers. He's definitely been blessed with all the powers he's gotten, and the more he learns, the more he realizes how strong he actually is. And this then leads obviously to them heading off for the day. Azuku begins to write in his notebook more and more about the skills he begins to learn. He writes down about the, the wisdom that he has, which is more or less the wise one or the lord of wisdom and more or less just that unique skill of great sage, as I said earlier. Also writing, at, writing down about predator, about gluttony, about basically his ability to devour and absorb other beings or other animals and stuff like that. Something that he personally wouldn't go go do especially because that is kind of murder but with that said he just wants to keep that in mind because after all it could become a possible outcome if if it came to that he also learned about his regeneration as a slime or part slime he thinks that he at least he could transform into he actually has some tangibility and also the fact that he has practical infinite regeneration Yes, he can technically still die, but he learned pretty quickly after breaking his arm one time during his small little training, and it practically healed in a matter of just minutes. 20 minutes later and it was fully healed. On top of this, he has a sense of everything around him, being that of light, sound, smell, heat, and a giant radius. He has more or less heightened senses to the point where most of the things around him are practically moving in slow motion. If he basically so chooses to make that happen. On top of this, he has some other abilities he actually learned that he had pretty soon. Um, but let's just say he doesn't have a complete understanding of them. 
because frankly he has some really powerful things like black lightning which basically shoots down a giant lightning bolt which he doesn't really understand or really want to use to that extent because that is a bit dangerous but he also has a lot of other stuff that are simple things like telepathy he has maybe even some poison breath and stuff like that but there is one thing missing it seems like he has some odd missing slot that involves someone by the name of Valdora, but he's not sure who he is. Maybe, maybe he personally is related to Valdora? Maybe he's some sort of reincarnate? And frankly, Izuku doesn't know, but he does learn a bunch from Great Sage and does learn something about being some sort of reincarnate. But even with that said, Great Sage is limited in terms of the the info Great Sage has, so Izuku doesn't know that he is the reincarnation of Rimuru Tempest. But he'd find out that he'd meet another reincarnate pretty soon. Izuku would then finally approach a bridge. He would go underneath that said bridge and begin walking. But as he walks through the bridge, he begins to hear things, sense things, and he actually senses a being underground that is flying at insane speeds, but another being that is actually approaching that other monster. So Azuku kind of keeps walking and realizes the monster is coming out of the sewer right beneath him. When the sludge monster comes busting out of the sewer, he immediately reacts and is able to get out from underneath the bridge, sensing the other thing that is coming. But he can sense that the other person has an odd body shape. At least seems like he's a giant man or she's a giant man or giant woman, excuse me. And frankly, he's not sure what's coming, but he th he believes to think that maybe taking things into his own hands isn't the best idea. So he decides to turn into a slime form and just jump around and dodge as much as possible. And even when the monster tries to absorb him or the sludge monster tries to basically take over, he's so tangible to the point that even the sludge monster can't even wrap his, his goo around him. It's practically impossible. He can't even get a hold of Azuku. Azuku though is just stalling at this point. If that person that is coming is a bad person, then he'll do what he must do in terms of trying to run away and getting away. It wouldn't be too hard for him to leave. But if that's a good person, then he can stall it out for a pro hero. The pro hero defeats the, the monster and then all all ends is, ends well, right? All is that ends well. So, so Azuku just waits more and more and then finally the figure arrives and Azuku pulls away from the monster, getting away immediately as he sees it's All Might, and he hears one thing, DETROIT SMASH! Smashing into the sludge villain, the goo just splatters everywhere. Azuku watches this in complete awe and is kind of fanboying at this point, and Great Sage even points out that Azuku is overly excited and his heart rate has skyrocketed even when, even compared to, the, to him actually fighting, which is where it should have skyrocketed. Azuku tells Great Sage to shush up, but Great Sage reminds him that he can only hear her, so why would being quiet even matter? But with that said though, it's not really a big deal. He finally is able to meet his one hero, All Might. He introduces himself to All Might and is freaking out, fanboying, asking for autographs, blah blah blah, and he begins to say that he's such a big fan, that he, he he's, he's his favorite hero. And All Might begins to say that he thanks the boy. Thank you, my boy, but unfortunately I have to leave. Azuku wants to stop him though, saying that that from a young age he was told that he has great potential, but he hopes to, to be trained by someone like All Might, even if it's not like All Might it, himself. And All Might nods and looks at him and says, Are you going to UA? Um, yeah, that's my plan. Good, then you will have someone like me training you. That's a promise. All Might winks and then jumps off. Azuku watches as All Might jumps off and jumps away. He watches in awe and begins to think to himself that he will make sure that he is just like his hero. He's gonna make sure that he's just like All Might. No, he's gonna be even better than All Might. He's gonna be stronger than All Might and he's gonna save even more people. With what he has, he can make an impact even more than All Might himself. Azuku begins to think that in his head as he heads home. He tells his mother what happened in which she kind of freaks out at the fact that her her baby almost got hurt, but Izuku says that he there was no chance that that villain had basically the repertoire to actually hurt him. In which she understands that, but still, 
when you come home and you say that, oh, sorry, I'm late because a sludge villain tried to kill me, it's something a mother would worry about. Azuku apologizes for making her basically fear the worst, and she says that it's completely fine, and that she's proud of her, her son for basically meeting All Might and surviving a villain attack with relative ease. Azuku nods, and they actually eat their fa most favorite food they possibly can think of, and this would lead to a time skip of 10 months where Azuku trains for the UA entrance exam. Let's say during the training, he begins to learn more and more about his powers. He can do insane amounts of training, obviously he doesn't have a supervision of a pro hero, and that's just not something he would be able to do, but even though that's the case, he can still sharpen the skills he has. And let's just say, with the high intelligence he has, and let's just say fast learning rates, he can learn martial arts and some basic things relatively easily, and he probably was doing this all throughout his life. Because it's not like the Deku and, you know, Canon should have been just learning martial arts throughout his life instead of just, you know, saying that I'm going to be a quirkless hero. Sorry, that's just, you know, something I wanted to bring up. But beyond that, let's just get back into the what if. He trains for 10 months. Like I said, it's nothing in crazy, nothing crazy. He's not allowed to use his quirk outside, but he does learn various skills that he actually has. Various skills that he would basically be able to perfect over a large amount of time. But luckily with his analysis skills and stuff like that, it makes things a lot easier to use. But still, experience is one thing and knowing something is another. So experience in the battlefield is something he definitely wants. With that said, the 10 months are now up. He did his studying. Frankly, he didn't have to do much studying. But he did his studying, did his training, and the UA entrance exam is right around the corner. And when he arrives at the UA entrance exam, he begins to walk forward, completely happy. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be the greatest hero of all- oh no. He trips on a rock and begins to fall to the ground, but just as he does this, someone grabs him. Oh, um, uh, thank you, thank you so much. The girl nods at him and says that her name is Ochako Uraraka, and that it's really no problem. That she kinda has a quirk for this, so it kinda works out. He nods and apologizes for the trouble as they both walk in, as Bakugo is kind of behind Azuku, in which he was kind of yelling at him the whole time, but Azuku kind of learned to like, you know, block out that side. He kind of just like silences Bakugo. I mean, it's not too outlandish when you have like godly senses, but that's beyond the point, right? So they head in and Present Mike is there explaining everything that's going to go down. They talk about the written exam, which... Azuku will have no problem with, obviously, so they get sent into different rooms and take that written exam. After the written exam, though, they all come back out and they begin to get explained the practical. The practical has a bunch of robots, a bunch of robots, one pointer, two pointer, three pointer. And just as the zero pointer is about to be explained, a man by the name of Tenya Ida with blue hair begins to stand up. This is very unprofessional. You should definitely realize that there's a zero pointer and explain it to us. And obviously, President Mike was going to explain this, but Ida kind of jumped the gun trying to be a good student, which he's kind of is, but also not at the same time. But yeah, I digress. But after President Mike explains everything and says more or less to just stay away from those zero pointers, that's basically what they're going to be doing. And Azuku heads off to his gate and gets ready for the practical exam. He stands there in complete wait. He wants to dash off as fast as possible and just destroy as many things as he can possibly see. In which he has totally, and I mean utterly, the ability to do such a thing. So, right when he does, right when that those gates open, he goes sprinting off, changing his body slowly into this odd battle armor. And it's actually from a skill he learned. So he does know how to use this thing called Poisonous Breath, which they're robots, so that wouldn't work. Paralyzing Breath, which they're robots, so that won't really work. But he does have Battle Armor. It's this scaly armor around their, his body that is basically harder than steel, but feels as light as a feather for him. It's because weight manipulation is practically nothing for him. So he's able to actually punch through these robots as if it were nothing. Frankly, he has really, really, really strong physical strength, basically far beyond the normal human. So breaking these robots and running really fast in this battle armor suit is practically really easy. 
And he does just that. He just smashes through them more and more and more and more. And he just watches as the points rack up, rack up, and rack up. But up in the stands, there are teachers, there are pro heroes currently watching, and watching Azuku go insane, destroying more and more. And as they're watching this, it's they're just shocked in amazement. Now who is this? This is pretty interesting. Yes, Aizawa. Very interesting. He's very strong. We should check out his quirk. What is it? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, right here. What the? It just says it's some transformation quirk with a bunch of other perks. I don't get it. Oh, now that is definitely something else. Maybe the perks are explained. Aizawa begins to look through all of the quote-unquote perks or possible things that Azuku has, and the list is three pages long. And he is complete and utter shock about this. And it even says at the end that it's just, that's not it, that there's more, that it's just limited to this because there's no reason to say any more about what he can do. They're shocked, but they say that this boy right here is going to be something else. And that's a promise. Just as they say this though, they begin to talk about maybe giving the, the entirety of this place a challenge and activating the Zero Point Robot. So they do just that. The Zero Point Robot comes out of nowhere, in which it actually hurts some of the students and forces them either to run away or get stuck under rubble, in which one of them do get stuck under rubble. An Ochako Uraraka, who has overused her quirk, is too tired and hurt to actually help herself get out of the situation. But just as a zero pointer is about to touch her and about to get her down, he Izuku actually jumps in front of her, grabbing the leg of the zero pointer and begins to push it over. As he does this, lightning begins to strike down. A black lightning strikes down onto the robot, basically getting rid of the electrical circuits entirely. As he slams it to the ground, it explodes and along with a ton of other buildings. And he helps Ochako up and actually puts puts his hand on her leg and is able to partially heal her and healing up her leg so it's just a small limp. Yeah, sorry I can't heal you more. I'm still trying to get a grasp on the whole outer healing thing. I don't really understand it. I have my own regeneration, but supposedly I can heal other people. I don't know. It's kind of confusing and I don't really get it entirely, but uh, I'll have to work on that, I guess. Ochako is kind of shocked to hear this. This guy, he's so casually talking about his regeneration and that he can heal other people, just casually like that. As she's thinking about this, Azuku puts out his hand to help her up and bring her to Recovery Girl to finish off the rest of the healing, in which she does just that relatively easily, just healing Ochako up the rest of the way. She asks for his name and he obviously gives it, Azuku Midoriya, and she, he basically quickly bids her farewell. He doesn't really want to talk too much. He has some things to do and wants to learn more and more. He has a lot of things to know. Let's just say that. His power is so unknown to him to the point that that's kind of what he's been obsessing over for a long time. He has, he has Great Sage who will tell him as much as they possibly know in entirety, but at the end of the day, he's learning how to use skills he's never seen before in his life. So... The more and more he learns, and which the more and more time he has to dedicate, that's what he wants to do. But just as he's leaving back home to basically celebrate with his mother, not only does someone approach him, but the voice in his head begins to talk once again. Azuku, I figure something out. Okay, what is that? It seems that this Veldora fellow, it seems that this person has a connection with you, but... It actually is a reincarnate. Your theory was correct. Oh wow, that's a first. Normally you correct me on my theories. Yes, actually. But with that said, it seems that this Veldora is a storm dragon. And it seems like someone else might actually be the reincarnation of that said storm dragon. Whoa, that's something else. What are you talking about? A reincarnation like me? Like I'm a reincarnate and then they're reincarnate? How would I even know who they are? You'd know when you see them. For sure, I promise you that, you'd actually automatically know. Since you have a connection with this so-called Veldora Lord of Storms, 
you would quickly understand exactly who that is. Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. Sort of. But, I mean, that barely does make sense. Azuku cuts himself off because, well, there is someone standing in front of him. It's actually two people. Aizawa and Nezu. And they're kind of weirded out by the fact that this kid is straight up talking to himself. Look, I know this looks weird. But it's part of my quirk. You can believe me or not. No quirk analysis test is actually going to tell you that, though. She actually has a voice. It's... I call her Great Sage. She's kind of like... My only friend. It's not sad, I promise. It's kind of sad. But still. What do you need? Aizawa and Nezu are kind of confused. Like, the kid has a sense of humor. Doesn't really take things too, too seriously. But he's very lighthearted. And it seems like he is kind of telling the truth about this. In which Aizawa just explains that they were impressed with his show of power. He did a lot. A lot, he means. Ah, uh, I mean, I did okay. I, I destroyed a decent amount of robots. I mean, uh, that big zero pointer, it doesn't count for points. So, that's whatever. But at least I helped that girl out. Aizawa then begins to say that he's really smart. But did he not realize the whole test? Oh, the hero thing. Oh, yeah, but I don't know how many points you'd get for that. I mean... I don't have a scorecard for that. Aizawa then explains that he scored first, by a long shot. He defeated enough robots to basically get him over a 100 point mark, but saving the girl put him even higher. So let's just say he's at about 180. And 180 points puts him number one in all of the entrance exams. Aizawa and Nezu then say that they would like him to actually just accept the offer now. He does, they don't want them, to, or what, he doesn't want, want them or him to go off to another school, and they want him here, because they can get his full potential, and that's a promise. In which Azuku says that he wouldn't have gone to any other school anyways, but he'd love some early admissions so he can just move in uh, earlier, and maybe he can use the facility to train uh, like better ways. In which Aizawa says that that is, that is a good idea, that he can personally train him as well. And Azuku is down for this. He hasn't gotten actual serious training since really his martial arts stuff, but most of that martial arts stuff was some basic things. And then he realized that he could just learn all that on the computer. So he just stopped, you know, watching it and stopped training in a dojo. Just a waste of money, honestly. But um, Azuku then, then heads back home after basically accepting their offer and tells his mother about it in which she is extremely excited, saying that they need to celebrate, that they're going to celebrate right now. So they go out for dinner, have a nice night, blah blah blah, and more or less just get Azuku ready to head to UA and their dorms. And yes, they have dorms because I do this in my fanfictions, because I want to be on the point, but yeah. But yeah, so he, they move him into dorms quickly, and they basically just all get set up and ready to go. And Azuku's kind of on his own for a bit until people begin to show up. Momo Yagirozu, Shoko Todoroki, which is the female, a female Todoroki, which I'm sure some of you know where I'm going with this. But it's not a ship. Get your head out the gutter. But with that said, he does meet some people. The people that were basically just like suggested and went through um, more or less the uh, recommendation exam and stuff like that. So he meets Shoko Todoroki. And he meets Momo Yairozu and meets some of the other people that are coming in based on recommendation. So he does meet all of them, introduces himself, but that doesn't really go much. But just as he's shaking Shoko's hand, when he grabs her hand and shakes it, he realizes something. Oh my god. Great Sage? Great Sage begins to talk. Yes, that seems to be the reincarnate of the Storm Dragon Veldora. That's something else. Kind of fits half and half quirk ice and fire just as he's saying this shoko asks what the heck he's doing why are you talking to yourself oh i'm sorry um i have something in my head i know it sounds kind of weird but it's just part of my quirk and i can talk to them and i was actually looking for somebody i was looking for the reincarnates of veldora the lord of the storms and it seems like you're him her something like that it seems like you are the reincarnate of him. And Shoko doesn't know what he's even talking about. You sound crazy. No, I'm definitely no reincarnate of a dragon, okay? I have a fire and ice quirk. It's that simple. Yeah, maybe. But, uh, I, I at least want to be your friend. I want to get to know you, you know? And maybe, maybe one day I can prove that you are Veldora, the Lord of Storms, or the reincarnate of him. 
And if you're not, you're not. It's that simple. How about it? Azuku puts out his hand, but Shoko rejects it, thinking that he's kind of just a psychopath. And Azuku just shrugs. But Great Sage more or less just says, like, uh, it doesn't really matter too much at the fact that you could say it's not too big of a deal that she doesn't believe, at least not right now. But with all that said and done, Deku or Azuku begins to wait on the first day of UA High, in which it comes relatively quickly and he enters his classroom by the name of Class 1A. He sits down and waits for the teacher to arrive, but he can tell that he's just just sleeping on the floor. He senses him, but doesn't really say much. He's already talked to Aizawa a couple times, waiting for the entirety of his class to come in and join him. Once they do, they begin to arrive and begin to speak about what's... They begin to talk about what they think is going to happen, in which Aizawa cuts them all off and tells them all to shut their mouths. Okay, you rejects. Yes, I called you a reject. You really probably don't even deserve to be here. And you're kind of useless. I can just sense the uselessness. Well, whatever. By the way, we're not doing that whole, oh, we're gonna greet you in stuff. I don't care about any of that. All of you are gonna go out there, get on your PE uniforms, and we're gonna do some tests because I don't care about any of your feelings. Now go. Shoo shoo, hurry up. Aizawa tells them all to go get changed, in which all of them do reluctantly enough because they're kind of confused about what's even going on. But after getting changed, they all are ready for their quirk assessment test. Once that quirk assessment test starts though, Aizawa begins to pick out who he wants to throw the first ball. He calls on Azuku himself, the person that actually got the number one score in, out of everybody in the entrance exam, in which Bakugo argues saying that he for sure got better. But Azuku basically just doesn't even say anything to this and just continues to walk forward and launches the ball at full strength he can possibly do. Launching the ball upwards of 8,000 meters. He looks at the ball as it sails back down and Aizawa smiles seeing the meter at 8,000. Good job, kid. You uh seem like you're going to live up to the hype. That's That's good. Maybe you won't be useless like these other people. Yeah, thanks, I think. Azuku goes to walk back toward the line, but Bakugo charges right at him with an explosion. Aizawa grabs him and cancels his quirk before he could do anything. You know I would have been fine, right? You've read up on my quirk, correct, um, Aizawa-sensei? Yeah, but it's really not a good look letting my student get hit. Um... But yeah, so that's why. Uh, I know you would have just not taken damage. I've seen your quirk, but still, gotta look like a semi-good teacher, right? Yeah, that's fair enough. Bakugo continues to scream and tell them that they're useless and idiots, but Azuku has mastered the art of ignoring the Bakugo or ignoring the Pomeranian, so he doesn't really think too much about it. And basically, they go through a ton of quirk assessment tests. We're talking about races, we're talking about grip tests, stretching, stuff like that. All the basic stuff you would do in your middle school, like fitness gram exam or something. Um, all that stuff is kind of done, finished, and Azuku actually does get first in the entire exam. But um, Aizawa doesn't really bring up the fact that, well, you could say... Oh, well, oh yeah, we're gonna expel one of you because I don't really care about that idea. But Aizawa does make it pretty apparent that he would expel anybody that doesn't stand up to his level of critique and that if he sees anybody slacking off and stuff like that, he won't hesitate to throw them out. So that's just the Aizawa way, I guess. And Aizawa is dead serious about this and mo mo most, most of the students actually do know this, that Aizawa is that way and he's done that with multiple classes. But after, after the quirk assessment test is done, everybody is practically just sent to the dorms and just rest for the rest of the day. And they kind of just get to know each other, talk about whatever, and just introduce each other um, to one another. When the next day arrives though, they're expecting just a normal lesson. I mean, obviously maybe the first day was something out of the ordinary, but that actually would not be the case. It would actually be that this day would be even greater. The wish that Azuku wanted and wanted to train with the one and only All Might would actually come true right now. All Might comes busting through the door. I am here walking through the door like a normal person. 
All Might more or less just tells them that they're going to be doing some hero versus villain training and to meet him outside. In which Azuku actually goes and gets his hero costume and when he looks he actually sees that it's very very interesting. It's this dark leather type of clothing like some dark lord or demon lord type of clothing. It's actually pretty sick. He finds it to be awesome and he's been actually actually sketching a bunch of this stuff very similar to this because he kind of got out of the phase of the whole I want to look like All Might thing and a little breakthrough of canon. I don't think that's kind of weird that he wanted to look like All Might. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but like when you want to be like your number one hero, you would think you wouldn't want to look exactly like him. Like you want to be better than him, but hey, more, more, more power to you, I guess. But Azuku does have like that demon lord look that uh, that Rimaru had in uh, in that time I got reincarnated as a slime, so keep that in mind as well. And they all head out, and Azuku eventually gets some time to actually speak with All Might, and saying that it's a pleasure to be getting trained by him. All Might did say that he would be training him. You know, young Midoriya, I did tell you I would be training you, but you know, in its own way. Midoriya starts kind of laughing about this and is happy to see that at least he can train with someone like All Might and happy to see that he's going to get this chance. And right after that is kind of said and done, All Might begins explaining what's going to happen. Hero versus villain training. It's going to be a 2v2, villains will have to protect a bomb and basically stop the heroes from touching the bomb within the first 5 minutes. And they're actually going to start with their teams right now. And once, once All Might starts, he begins to say the teams. The hero team will be Azuku Midoriya and Shoko Todoroki. And the villain team would be Kutsuki Bakuro and Tenya Ida. And this actually does make Midoriya kind of happy. The fact that he can fight with the reincarnate of Veldora, even though, well, Shoko doesn't really want to admit that. Or Shoka doesn't really want to admit that. But even with that said, doesn't really matter to him. Eventually she will learn and she will realize that she is the reincarnate when she unlocks the power that is practically connected with with the reincarnation the reincarnate of Rimuru Tepis, which in this scenario would be Azuku Midoriya. So they all get ready and Sh Shoka and Azuku begin to actually create a plan and it's actually a pretty simple one. It's kind of just go up there and beat them up. Not gonna lie, probably not the smartest plan for Midoriya, but at the end of the day, they kind of outpower them by a good margin, so he doesn't really see the need to not just run in headfirst to just absolutely and utterly destroy them. So he feels that's probably the best way of going about it. And that ends up working pretty well. Azuku heads up immediately with Shoka, and Bakugo comes charging in. When Bakugo tries to blast Shoka, Azuku just steps in front, takes the blast as if it was literally nothing, changing into a slime form, covering him slightly as Shoka just wraps the the, the like the little band they get, or like the paper the paper clip or the tape or whatever the capture tape. There you go, around. Bakugo and instantly captures him with relative ease, especially because Azuku kind of had him already detained. And even in the speakers above, you can hear All Might say that he was quickly captured by Shoka and Azuku's teamwork. After defeating him, it's kind of a landslide. Frankly, Tenya Ida would have no chance in terms of beating them. Azuku's powers alone would cause extreme trouble in terms of closing the distance and also his projectile attacks that he has, even paralyzation attacks. So he does decide to run in with Shoka, and he uses paralyzing breath, and it completely stuns Tenya, and he touches the bomb. It was pretty efficient, pretty quick, and All Might was even impressed, saying that they definitely had some good teamwork, but it seems like the random roll that he kinda did made him kinda get outclassed, in which Bakugo gets kinda mad about this, and says that if it was a fight to the death, he would've won. But Azuku says that that's probably not even the case, because he's not even sure if he can, well, die. But that's beyond the point, really. And all the all the fights then go on practically normal. Everything that would have happened kind of already happens, just like how usual. Just switch out Todoroki for Ochako, and and maybe we have like slightly different things happen, but like to the point, it's not too effective, or it doesn't affect. 
um, Azuku, so there's no real reason to talk about that too much. But All Might does congratulate everybody for doing a great job and says that they all put in really proper effort and Aizawa would be proud to see it. But it's for some reason they feel as if they could just hear Aizawa's critiques already and hear all of the negative stuff Aizawa is going to say. Which is kind of true. That's kind of just the Aizawa way. But All Might then lets them all go and they're all done for the day. Having a nice time just resting and relaxing and Azuku of course continues his training in one of the UA gyms. During this training though, Azuku does get approached by someone. And it's actually Bakugo Katsuki, his former best friend and best bud in basically preschool. But Azuku kind of just tells him to scram off like he doesn't really care. And Bakugo questions what's wrong with him that he's being such a nerd and that he's not like he why why is he ignoring him all the time but Azuku doesn't really respond to this like if Bakugo doesn't know the reason then he doesn't really deserve to know the reason the full reason why he's like, ignoring him now like Azuku started getting bullied initially because of his quote-unquote lame quirk he can turn into a slime but like even after he proved that he had more of a quirk than just that the other kids and Bakugo refused to basically believe it but whatever they just thought he was just some nerd and that was about it but still azuku doesn't necessarily hold a grudge but he does keep his quote-unquote friends at arm's length there's no reason for him to keep them all close when someone like bakugo still exists bakugo hearing this does get mad and even tries to attack azuku but he easily detains bakugo and throws him out of the gym and tells him not to come back because he's still training and obviously Bakugo would just leave and be pretty pissed about this. Azuku finishes up his training session and walks out and heads back to the dorms and people actually do question when he gets back, asking what he was doing. And he just explains that he was training up and that he does that a lot now because he wants to continuously learn how to adapt and use all of his skills. In which they think that's pretty honorable. The fact that he wants to train that hard and get stronger to that degree is pretty impressive. But after some time and after they all head to bed, the next day of UA or at least the next important event of UA would then occur. Aizawa waits there and basically tells them all that they're going to be going to the USJ. The USJ is basically a facility that will basically simulate um, rescue training. And Aizawa says that someone else is going to be there to actually explain that to y'all. So he allows them all to head to the bus, calls them rejects just like normal, and, tell, and tells them to all head off. They head off on the bus, heading towards the USJ. When they arrive at the USJ, they're actually greeted by Pro Hero 13, and Ochako fangirls over her a little bit, saying that she's such a big fan. When Azuku walks in, he begins to sense a ton of stuff. We're talking a ton of these villains that seem to be on the passageway to there. He's not so sure what's even going on. But when he senses this, he decides he'll tell Aizawa. Aizawa, I sense something. Something's coming, like big. Try to use your communicators or anything right now. Aizawa tries to do just that, and nothing's working. It seems all their communicators, cell phones, and anything you can think of is all being jammed. Aizawa points to the door and tells them to get out right now. But just as they're about to leave, a portal opens at the, at the middle of the USJ and a man with hands on his face by the name of Tomura Shigaraki arrives. Arrives in full effort to make some havoc, you could say. Make some people, some children, some high school future heroes in training deceased. Tomura Shigaraki is now the next fight, the next trial in Azuku's journey, but that's not only it. It seems that Tomura Shigaraki, or Shigaraki, is not just there to find All Might and kill him. He's there to seek out both Azuku and Shoka. Because he knows the power they both wield deep down inside. And that is a wrap for the technical part one of, well, Deku reincarnated as Rimuru or Rimuru Tempest. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, sub, comment down below, and leave any suggestions you have for future what-ifs, being that of My Hero Academia, um, Shield Hero, 
Jujutsu Kaisen. Maybe even that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Demon Slayer, stuff like that. I'm trying to add variety. I'm trying my best. When's the next part of this coming out? I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. Maybe it'll be in two or three days. I'm not so sure yet how consistently I'll do this. But um, if you enjoyed and you liked the longer video, I mean, I made a pretty long video. I'm kind of used to making these long videos now. But if, you're, if you like them, make sure to leave a like, sub, and comment down below, like I said. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later. The USJ. A place of rescue training that is about to be invaded by the League of Villains. The League of Villains storm through multiple warp gates, ready to make conflict and mass destruction with the future pro heroes. The students of Class 1A are staring into a giant group of villains. Azuku wondering what he should do. Should he take actions into his own hands? Or should he stand by waiting for his teachers to help them? He's not so sure, but he'll figure out exactly what he wants to do right now. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back with, quote unquote, the second installment of the Deku, the reincarnation of Rimuru Tempest. This is other known subtitled as Immortal. And that's it. So if you enjoy and you enjoy this What If Deku fanfiction, make sure to leave a like, sub, and comment down below. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time. And let's just get right into the What If. Let's get it. Azuku stares at the giant group of villains, even seeing the one by the name of Tomura Shigaraki. Next to him is a warp gate by the name of Kirogiri, and he's not sure what he should do. He hears Aizawa call out and say to, for the kids to get back into cover, make sure that they are all safe. But Azuku wants to go with him. He's about to question Aizawa, but just as he's about to, Aizawa jumps off. He needs to make a decision now. He needs to make a decision to take action to his own hands or not do anything at all. He's not so sure, but he, do, but he does remember. The power he has is not limited. The power he has is not a crutch. He needs to use that power to make sure everybody is safe. So what does he do? He goes right into the field of fire. He charges in at full blaze of glory as if he was going in at insane speeds. His thought analysis and using obviously Great Sage to its, to its fullest potential allows him to counteract every single quirk on that battlefield, blocking, parrying, and defeating every small villain in a matter of seconds. On top of that, he can use his paralysis breath, he can use anything else like black flames or black thunder, anything you can think of, he can use. He begins to use all of it, using everything, paralyzing a mass majority of the people to the ground, and then controlling gravity to the point that they're all stuck to the ground as well. Aizawa proceeds to knock all of them out, and all that is left in a matter of just a one minute is the main villains. What stands in front of them is Kurogiri and Shigaraki. Shigaraki stares at Azuku and stares at Aizawa, looking at Aizawa and tilts his head. You know, this is interesting, because I'm only here for the kid, but All Might is also a priority. So, how about it, Azuku Midoriya? How about you come with us, and you can be so much greater. Wow, it's like I live in an alternate, alternate reality. Why would I even do that? I just knocked out all of your villain friends. Friends? No, no. They're the farthest thing from friends. But now, you will all die. Shigaraki goes charging forward, and a warp gate appears in front of him, as if the warp gate is going to appear next to Azuku. Immediately, a hand goes and grabs his arm, and Aizawa isn't quick enough to even react. And at the same time, he gets punched in the face by a giant monster other known as a Nomu. Azuku panics and tries to peel the arm off of him as his skin begins to degrade and change, as if his body was now being neutralized and dissolved into nothingness. And that's exactly what happens. His body is gone. <laughs> I knew the kid wasn't what he all kicked up to be. <laughs> Master will be pleased though. The fact that he's really nothing is 
Kyrie is kind of reassuring. Azuku is now gone. At least that's what they think. Immediately, Azuku begins to rebuild and reconstruct himself, changing into a slime form and back into his human form. Azuku stares at Shigaraki. I guess you kind of reassured something for me. I guess I am immortal. Azuku goes charging through the warp gate, tackling Shigaraki and punching him to the ground. Immediately as he does this, the Nomu comes charging in as Azuku sprays paralysis breath all over the Nomu. Tackling the Nomu to the ground with his basically brute strength, at least what he has, and begins to try and defeat the Nomu. Seeing that it has insane, insane capabilities to withhold itself. But Azuku then gets a voice in his head. Great Sage begins to talk. Hello, just for your information, this monster is able to be controlled. What? How the hell am I supposed to do that? What do you mean controlled? Yes, I know it may sound odd, but in this world it's obviously a little different. Everybody already has names, but this thing, other known as a Nomu, is not really its name. That is kind of like an alias, or just the name of a monster. Kind of like how you call a dog a dog. Oh, so you're telling me... Yes, if you name it, it will, well, take over, and you'll take over, but be aware, this may deplete you a good bit. Well, it's worth a try if I can't hurt it. Shigaraki is confused. Who the hell is this kid talking to? Azuku, for some reason, doesn't talk in his head when he talks to the Great Sage, but that's beyond the point. Azuku then charges at the Nomu and proceeds to give it a random name he can, I, he can think of calling the Nomu Alfred, as the Nomu begins to just channel more and more energy, and the Nomu stops in its place, and it begins to change form, as if the Nomu was different. The color of its skin begins to change, it begins to shrink slightly, but still maintain that buff form, and become more and more humanoid, as if it was coming back to its human form. Shigaraki begins to panic, thinking that maybe he just neutralized the Nomu, but that's wrong, he didn't. He actually gave the Nomu a whole new meaning. The Nomu then watches as Azuku slowly but surely falls and catches him. Are you okay, Master? Master Azuku? Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, Great Sage, I know you said that it was gonna deplete me, but I didn't think that much. Yes, I may have ran a miscalculation. The Nomu was a lot stronger than I expected, at least in terms of scale to you. It might not have been strong one-on-one, -on -one, but in terms of what it was holding, it was pretty strong. Oh, you know, that makes sense. Hey, Alfred, can you give me the Aizawa so I can get off this battlefield? I need a nap. Alfred runs over, appearing into Aizawa's frame of vision immediately. Aizawa being extremely hurt, but still able to pick up Azuku and take him away. It's not like he has, like, broken limbs and something like that. He wasn't beaten as bad, compared to in canon, at least. He gives Azuku to Aizawa, and Alfred begins to crack his knuckles, and the fight begins between the former Nomu, Shigaraki, and Kurogiri. But let's just say that fight is far out of their range. The Alfred, or the Nomu beforehand, has all the quirks that it once had, but also the brute strength that it once had as well. Being able to keep up with anything Shigaraki and Kurogiri can even throw at him, and when All Might arrives, the realization of failure is right in front of them, and very prominent. So they decide that they'll take their leave, but they promise that they'll be back. But just as Kurogiri and Alfred, or just as Kurogiri and Shigaraki are about to leave, Alfred goes in and grabs Shigaraki, grabs the arm of Shigaraki more specifically, and when the warp gate closes, well, you can assume what happens to that arm. His right arm is completely severed, and he's kind of holding it, which is kind of weird. He throws it toward the heroes that are just arriving, and even All Might is kind of stunned to see this, seeing a knocked out Azuku, and seeing this brand new figure. Let's just say Azuku is going to be out for a while, and when I mean a while, I mean a while. He's actually out for almost a whole week. Azuku actually kind of does miss a lot, missing the sports festival actually entirely. 
Unfortunately, he would have done extremely well, but I feel like a lot of us don't really need the confirmation that is Azuku is stronger than everybody else in his class. But when he wakes up in Recovery Girl's bed, she gives him a rundown of what just occurred, explaining all the stuff that happened about how he basically saved everybody, but he is kind of in trouble. What am I in trouble for? Honey, you kind of, you know, uh, fought without permission. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Am I on, like, house arrest or something? Recovery Girl then explains that the week of him being out cold kind of counts for the, rec uh, the house arrest, quote-unquote. So, not to worry about that. But she's sure that Aizawa will have something for him. Just as she says this, Aizawa walks in, shaking his damn head, saying that... He should have really thought out before he did something like that, but I guess that it did work out for the best because they're all alive. Yeah. So what about, uh, Alfred? Whatever I called him. I think that was it. Great Sage? Yes, it was Alfred. Not the best choice of names, but I see where you're going with it. Yeah, sure. What happened to him? Well, you see, Alfred is a interesting thing. Aizawa begins to explain that Alfred refused to even go into custody, and frankly, they had no power to actually stop it. He even questions how strong Azuku truly is, in which he responds a little too strong probably for his own good, in which they walk out, walk out of um, Recovery Girl's office, and they head over to where Alfred is currently kind of, but sort of being detained, but he's actually just in this conference room watching TV. Azuku walks in and Alfred begins to jump with joy, but even Azuku doesn't even really understand what's going on, questioning Aizawa more and more, in which Aizawa just says that Alfred is a little bit too strong for them to stop, and frankly, there's not like he did anything too wrong except for ripping the guy's arm off, which they just won't talk about very much. Izuku nods and even questions what he missed exactly, and Aizawa does explain that he missed the whole, well, UA sports festival, but frankly with him and what some heroes have heard rumors of, or, you know, in their case it would be true, um, he won't have to worry about getting offers, because he'll get plenty. He says that school starts in about a couple hours, so to meet him over there once he's ready to go, and he should be okay. And Izuku nods as he tells more or less Alfred to be on his best behavior because he'll be hanging around here quite a bit. Alfred agrees and says that he wants to go to school with Izuku, but obviously it's not that simple. Alfred is still basically a monster and he has to do his own things and maybe they'll even mold him into a proper hero. But a couple hours then pass and the school begins once again and Aizawa begins to explain to the whole class what the plans are. But people do begin to question what even happened to Azuku and why did he just pass out like that, in which Aizawa says if Azuku wants to tell him that he can, but other than that, they need to shut up and get ready for basically the the agencies and all their their little internships that they're going to be basically going into, showing them a cluster of people that got a ton, a ton of votes or a ton of offers, in which Azuku is still on the top, in which in which Shoka, Shoka, Shoka Todoroki begins to question how he even did that when he's literally didn't even go to the exam or the, the sports festival. In which Azuku just shrugs and says that at least she got second place, she did pretty good. And she's just kind of confused, but just stares at him oddly and then turns back around. Aizawa begins to explain that they have till the end of the day to choose where they want to go, handing out multiple papers and paper after paper. Looking at where they want to go, Azuku has a lot of options, and when he means a lot, he means a lot. Seeing one that does catch his eye, and he's actually kind of wanting to go there. In which he even asks where, where Shoka is going, or where Todoroki is going, and she says that she's actually just going to go to her father. That she doesn't have the worst relationship with him, but also doesn't like him at the end of the day. But still, her father is still the number two hero, and frankly, she would like that experience. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I'm doing the same. Well, later. Azuku then basically walks away and hands in the paper to Aizawa, confirming that he's going to Endeavor's agency. This is something Shoka did not want to hear, 
and that she doesn't want to deal with Izuku, especially with this whole blabbering thing about her being the reincarnation of Veldora or whatever the Dragon of Storms is. In which Izuku doesn't really pay much mind to that, telling her before that she, he wouldn't be basically overwhelming her with that idea, but she'll soon figure out that she is. After some time passes and also they get their rides all the way to the agencies, Azuku finally makes his way to Endeavor's agency with Shoka herself. When they arrive, Endeavor makes it pretty apparent that Azuku is just there to benefit his daughter, and that he doesn't really care about the quote unquote overwhelming strength that he has, just wants to get her daughter to new heights, in which Azuku agrees that he just wants to strengthen her as well which this surprises Endeavor and tells him to not make any sudden moves around her or sudden advances, which Izuku confirms that he doesn't plan on doing that either. That she is destined to be his quote unquote best friend, like family, so I mean take that how you want it. Azuku then just says that he'll do whatever needs to be done in terms of training and getting ready and he'll help out the best he possibly can. And Endeavor does like the way this sounds, but of course he doesn't like the cocky mentality that Izuku is so quote unquote displaying. He then quickly says that they'll do some sparring sessions to start off, in which these sessions go relatively normal. Frankly, Izuku is just training Shoka. He knows that he can outpace her, out, out fight her, out everything. Frankly, his power is overwhelming, but he's trying to get her to unleash the power he knows that she has. He continues to just basically keep telling her that over and over again that her power is not going to be strong enough. Not going to be strong enough to hit him, not going to be strong enough to attack him. Keep, and he keeps doing this over and over again until finally something happens. A giant cloud begins to overwhelm and basically appear over Shoka and everything begins to just change. Lightning begins to strike around her and wings begin to grow behind her until the clouds begin to disappear and the wings retract back into her body and she passes out. Azuku grabs her, grabbing her, making sure that she's safe and heals her right back up and carries her to basically this living quarters that they have. And when she wakes up, she questions what even happened and he explains exactly what did. She's still at a loss for words, not believing exactly what occurred, but Azuku says that she doesn't have to believe it, but it did happen and soon that power will arise within her and she'll need to know how to control it. But luckily he'll be here to help her, and that he can help her out, especially he has good experience with powers that are extremely unknown. With that said though, Endeavor asks if they're ready to go, and Asuku questions where they'll be going, and he says that they'll be getting some real experience down in Hosu City. So that is exactly where they're going to be headed. They head down to Hosu City in hopes to find some good action and just some simple people or simple villains to take down. But these quote unquote simple villains, let's just say it wouldn't go that easy. It wouldn't be just simple villains, it would actually be a ton of Nomus running rampant destroying everything. Azuku quickly wants to make a move and defeat a bunch of these Nomus, but Endeavor says that they just need him to back him up. That's it. He doesn't want him to get in trouble and doesn't want Shoka to get in trouble either. But quickly, just as Endeavor says this, Azuku bolts off. What he didn't realize is that he was sensing something else as well. A malicious battle that was about to go on. His own friend, or at least classmate by the name of Tenya Ida, would be fighting someone that had such malicious intent that he would basically have no hesitation in killing his classmate. And that is Stain, the hero killer. Azuku goes dashing in, finding Stain immediately. Stain's about to plunge his sword into, into Ida as Azuku lands a clean punch on him, making him basically fly toward a wall. You definitely lucked out, Ida. You're lucky I'm even here. If I didn't get here in time, you'd be dead. Ida then responds saying that he doesn't need help, that this is his fight. Yeah, sure, then get up. Exactly, you can't. Now the stain, hero killer, whatever you want to call him, that's going to be my fight, not yours. Azuku slowly but surely walks over to Stain as Stain comes flying in at insane speeds, ready to cut him. He cuts him, but unfortunately when he licks the, the quote unquote blood, there is no blood to be licked. There is no bleeding 
and Izuku has changed into a slime form, overwhelming Stain and trying to cover him with his slime, and he's able to do that relatively easily, suffocating Stain to the point where he passes out. Now with a knocked out Stain, Azuku begins to use his paralysis breath, making sure that he cannot move for at least a couple hours until he can get some other heroes in as well. Azuku helps pick up Ida and even heals him up a bit and says that he really shouldn't be that stupid. As he begins to call toward Endeavor and as Endeavor and a bunch of pro heroes enter the area. They see that and Endeavor begins to grab the hero killer but just as he grabs him, through the paralysis, he breaks free based on pure will alone, cutting into Endeavor and licking the blood of Endeavor as well, paralyzing him slightly. Azuku says that there's no reason to fight him. Stain stands there, but he no longer can move. Stain is stuck in place and the paralysis has seeped further into his body. With my paralysis breath, you can fight it if you have enough willpower, but that will be about it. It goes deeper into your bloodstream and deeper into your body, and then you're definitely staying per paralyzed after that. It was impressive that even he could do that. He then heals Endeavor, forcing him out of the paralysis, and or at least from the blood. And immediately Endeavor is confused to see how strong Izuku is. Izuku says there's no reason to thank him, but he just tells Endeavor to take the credit for what just happened. Azuku walks away and begins to head off out of Ohosu City once everyone and all the villains and all the Nomus are all collected and ready to be disposed of. And let's just say this internship didn't go exactly according to plan for UA. UA wanted this internship to go smoothly, but that didn't do just that. Azuku was forced his hand and frankly he doesn't like the idea of his powers being so limited to the point that he can't fight villains when need be. This is technical villainy. It's against the law for him to actually do so, which he finds absolutely outrageous. This isn't or doesn't make sense to him that he needs a hero license to even do these things, but he doesn't really care at this point. He'll go with the flow, at least in terms of this manner. After some more time has passed, the internships get canceled and everyone heads back to the UA dorms and then eventually the classroom. Azawa explains that he apologizes for everything basically coming to a crashing burn as fast as it did, but unfortunately some students have their own ideas of the internship, looking at Tenya Ida, but not saying much more. After some more explanation though, Aizawa says that they will be doing their final exams. They will have a written portion of it, which they'll just need to do relatively easily, and then they'll have their, their practical, obviously. So everyone is excited to hear that the end of this part is heading is heading off to a complete forefront, but also that they're going to be going to a forest training camp in the near future, something that will be definitely amazing. But the only struggle that they're going to have, which is completely scary, is the fact that if you don't pass, you don't go. And it's that simple. So Azuku begins to study, or more like not really study, he kind of just looks at the books and immediately knows all the information. Even Great Sage, his quirk is basically his cheat sheet in a way and can help him with anything as well. On top of that though, he actually does begin to help some of his classmates study, anybody that really needs it. So everybody that's at the bottom, you know, the stupid type of kids, they uh, basically get some help. So people like Mina, Kirishima, um, Kaminari, people like that. Kirishima's not dumb by any means, I wouldn't say, but he's definitely not the smartest of the bunch. So everyone that's not really too smart, or basically is struggling here and there, will get some extra help by Izuku and even Momo Yayorozu, who is excited to see someone else really smart like that and has a passion for learning. But Izuku doesn't really have a passion for learning, he just knows everything. So there's a difference. And he makes that pretty apparent, that he doesn't really care about all this stuff. It's kind of just a means to an end, or whatever. So, Azuku then finishes up helping everybody out, and frankly, he's all ready for the test. The practical, or, excuse me, the written exam is relatively easy, at least for him. He gets 100% as if it were nothing. Everyone else, of course, they have their little struggles, but with Azuku helping out, that really isn't the problem. The written exam wasn't the problem by any means. It's all going to come down to the practical portion. And the practical portion will involve something that they were not expecting, and that is a fight with all of these pro heroes. Pro heroes that will stand up to them and fight. 
It seems that there is going to be no more robots, and Nezu even makes that very apparent. You see, we realized that that wasn't very practical to have you fight robots, so t today you'll actually be fighting us, the pro heroes. Now I will call out where everybody is going to be fighting, in which all the fights are called out until there's only two people left, and that is Bakugo and Izuku. Yes, and your fights will be... Hmm, let me think. Who's left? Oh, how, how silly am I? The one and only All Might himself. All Might comes crashing down. I am here! And I will be your opponent! Azuku slightly smiles, and Bakugo smiles as well, knowing that he wants to basically fight. And he wants to prove that he's the strongest. He wants to be proved that he's even stronger than Azuku. Azuku doesn't really mind. He likes the, the idea of fighting All Might, knowing how strong he is. He wants to test his limits, see how upworth can he actually go against All Might, and see what All Might's limits are. So soon after all of the other battles are finished and done, it is now time for the main event. Or at least that's what I'm calling it. The main event of the evening is going to be Azuku and Bakugo versus All Might. Let's just say there's no plan going into this. Azuku tried his best to try to conversate with Bakugo, but of course Bakugo don't like him, and he doesn't really like Bakugo very much either. So Bakugo just goes head first, going to fight All Might, and just as he's about to explode onto All Might, or explode his, his quirk onto All Might, Azuku strikes All Might with Black Lightning, trying to stun All Might. Seeing that All Might isn't too affected by it, but is partially stunned, Bakugo sees an opening and blasts him in the face. Azuku immediately closing the distance with his insane speed, catching up to Bakugo and All Might, punching All Might in the chest, and then punching him in the head, leading to him kicking him right where his most vulnerable spot was. Great Sage has told him that his weakness is actually right on his ribs. It seems that All Might has an injury there, pre-existing one at, at that. Using his paralysis breath, Azuku starts trying to pin All Might to the ground, and All Might tries to basically get out of it, forcing his way through, but he can feel that his body is actually feeling the effects of this. Azuku could easily win right now. He could run out with Bakugo and it would be an easy win, but he can tell that Bakugo wants to knock All Might out. But Azuku frankly doesn't want that happening. He doesn't want to hurt All Might, that's not his goal. So when, Bak when Bakugo goes for that final blow, Azuku uses his paralysis breath once again, spraying it, all, spraying it over All Might but also Bakugo, stunning him as well as he cuffs All Might. Sorry Bakugo, I didn't want you over exerting yourself. You're gonna hurt yourself with the quirk limitations you have. At least that's in the excuse that he wants to make. Releasing both of them from the paralysis, Bakugo tries his best to attack Azuku, but he easily dodges, pinning Bakugo to the ground and quickly knocking him out. Apologizing to All Might for hitting him in the spots that are his weakest, he's sure that those blows hurt a lot. In which All Might is confused to hear this, but Azuku says that he can actually help him out with that. Changing into his slime form, ripping a piece of himself off, he actually pastes it onto All Might and says that he needs to leave that there for at least a couple days. That that should heal him up, maybe to a certain extent, maybe perfectly. He's not so sure. There's no guarantee with his powers. He doesn't know his fullest extent, but you never really know. Wow, are you serious, young Midoriya? That's amazing. Even if it heals me a little bit, it could help with my hero work. I mean, actually, we'll speak on that some other time. Azuku nods and says that they can definitely hold a meeting, learning about whatever All Might wants to tell him. And some time, or obviously some time passes, they meet up with their class, and Aizawa says that whoever fails actually still goes to the, the little forest training camp, but it's not to worry, they'll just be taking extra classes. In which, All Might then pulls Azuku aside and asks to speak with him in the teacher's lounge. You see, young Midoriya. There's something that I wasn't telling everybody and didn't even tell many people at all. I actually have a quirk that I can pass down. And unfortunately, I passed it down to someone else. Someone very capable. But you may have been even more capable. I want you to know that. Oh, yeah, I can make that assumption. Honestly, I kind of already knew that. 
it's pretty obvious when you think about it in terms of analysis and how you actually use your quark. It's like a stored quark and then also that other guy, uh, the guy you gave it to, Mirio, right? Togata, Mirio Togata, something like that. He actually blatantly can use it. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it on the news, on the TV, I've seen him. He's a good, he's a good candidate. Probably better than me, a little bit more heroic. In which All Might is shocked that Azuku was able to break it all down, but at the end of the day, he has great sage and basically infinite and infinite intelligence at, 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 to a certain extent so he's just extremely smart so being able to break this down wasn't too big of an idea at least in his eyes all might then nods and basically says that he wants he wants zuku to keep it all a secret and thanks him for helping him heal up and all that other stuff in which all might says or azuku says that it's completely fine that he already intended to do such a thing once he figured out the weakness that he had but with that said, Azuku needs to head back to the dorms and get ready for the next day. Asking All Might if he'll be there as well, but unfortunately All Might will not be going because the villains were after Azuku and All Might. Wait, then why am I going? Young Midoriya, you should not worry. It's isolated. I don't even know where it is. So you being there should not be a threat. And Azuku shrugs, thinking that that is probably not the safest way of going about it, because if they're obviously going after him and All Might, they're obviously going to show up. But maybe he's missing something. Maybe he's forgetting something, and maybe he didn't see something. He's not sure. But he heads down to his dorm, and as he begins to do this, he does begin to turn on the TV. When he arrives in the dorm, he sees the TV and sees a replay of Bakugo struggling and yelling at the top of his lungs that he won unfairly. That he won, he might be number one in the UA Sports Festival, but this wasn't the way he wanted to win. He seemed like a villain, a rapid dog, a, rab a dog with rabies, uh, someone that is just terrible. Azuku stares at it for a while as the TV gets turned off behind him and it's Bakugo himself. Azuku came to the conclusion at this moment that the villains if they show up they might not be just coming after him they might be going after Bakugo if that's the case he'll he'll need to be ready and he'll need to be ready very very fast but nonetheless it all starts with them heading over to the the forest training camp and when they arrive go through a bunch of training and more or less getting pushed out into a giant forest off a cliff which is completely unsafe and after pushing their way through, it all starts there. It all starts in their forest training camp and all starts with the training to make sure any villain invasion from here on out is shut down, destroyed, and neutralized immediately. And that is the plan that Aizawa and the other, the other teachers and the Wild Wild Pussycats have in store. But you'll have to find out how that goes in the forest training camp in the next part or in the next installment if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like sub and comment down below leave any suggestions you have for future what ifs being deku now fumi and other stuff like that as y'all can see i'm going to be taking these deku what ifs slowly but surely i believe the last part was a couple days ago or maybe like five days ago or something like that maybe even a week i don't even know but that's just kind of my thing i not extremely big on deku what ifs but i want to compromise so i'm doing them here and there but uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later. The training arc begins. The forest training arc between class 1A and also class 1B finally arrives and they begin training to work on their quirk and the usages of it. It seems that Azuku is kind of stuck though. His power is accelerated to, to beyond a point that he can even really train much more. He begins to find out that he's stuck. But at the same time, this overwhelming power isn't a bad thing. Yes, he's kind of hit a wall at this moment, but it doesn't mean that he's weak. It just means that he's so much stronger than everyone else that he can't get much stronger beyond this. And even Aizawa recognizes this, thinking that maybe it's for the best if he pins up two of the strongest people to try and spar. And this leads to Azuku and Shoka, Shoka Todoroki, to become slightly more closer in the regard, maybe even best friends. Obviously, the reincarnation of Rimuru Tempest and the reincarnation of Veldora Tempest should be best friends in this world, and quickly that would be found out. 
After about a day and a half of training, they actually become pretty good friends. But Azuku does begin to question a lot of his motives right when the invasion of the forest begins. Villains are scattered everywhere and Azuku is tasked with protecting everybody. But guess what? He won't be allowed to do such a thing because he does not have a hero license, provisional hero license, and everybody is restricted. It seems as if there's backlash to be had if you go out of your way to fight villains and protect others. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. And this, I believe, will be the final installment of um, the reincarnation of Rimuru Tempest. Now, I'm kind of debating when I'm going to stop this. Frankly, I'm not 100% sure because I did say I would go to the, the UA, uh, the Class 1A versus Class 1B, but um, you'll see what I mean. Uh, that might actually not happen. We'll see what happens um, at the end of the day. But before we start and finish up, I want to give a quick shout out to some new members. I realize we got a couple new members. And frankly, it is lit how many members we have. I believe we have over 22 members now. So shout out to all of y'all. I already gave a shout out to practically all the other members. And uh, the other ones that have just came up are BDR um, Alced, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Daniel Muna Munez, um, Rusty, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. And then uh, Jacquees Knight or Jack, Jack, Jack Knight, something like that. But um, shout out to them. Um, thanks for watching the content. Thanks for becoming a member. Uh, you get the videos early. You get a bunch of cool emotes that you can use um, for what's gonna call it uh, for lives and stuff like that if you so choose. But the big thing is getting the uh, videos early. And I take it back. We do have 25 members total. So the grind for more and more members is upon us. And like always, I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope all y'all have an amazing day watching the rest of this uh, What If Daku fanfiction. And let's just get right into the What If. Let's get it. Azuku and Shoka stare as the villains begin to invade. He's about to make his move to protect as many people as possible. But Aizawa stops him, telling him that he can't go out there and fight. That it's not good, It's he'll get in serious trouble. Azuku begins to argue with him though. You sound ridiculous. Our, our classmates, they can all die. What are you talking about? And you guys aren't strong enough. It's not enough. All Might's not here. Nobody's here. So you just want me to stand by? Kid, I see what you're saying. But you can't. There's law. Rules. You know this. Law my ass. I don't care. I'm going. Azuku then grows these demonic-like wings and begins flying off toward a mountain range to get a higher vantage point. But when he arrives, he sees a child there, a child that he met earlier by the name of Koda, about to be attacked by a giant being by the name of Muscular. Azuku comes soaring in at insane speeds and slams Muscular into the, into the mountain and slams him back to the ground. He puts his hand on his chest and, and black lightning begins to electrocute through his body into Muscular's body, zapping Muscular to the fact that he's basically in a catatonic state, out cold entirely. He grabs Koda, and Koda asks what he just did and how did he do it, but he tells him not to worry about it, that he's just there to protect him. As he's flying away though, it seems as, as another villain. Another villain is about to take him, trying to put him in a small marble to detain Azuku, knowing that he is a giant threat. But just as this person is about to do that, someone else comes out of nowhere. Well, that's Shoka. Shoko comes flying in, blasting him with ice and fire, and slamming him into the ground, putting him in a capsule of ice, and putting him just completely out of commission. Azuku looks at Shoka and nods as he flies Koda away, putting him with Aizawa. Azuku is about to go back into the forest, but Aizawa warns him once again that he can't be doing this. This is not good. He'll be in trouble. But Azuku looks at him. Well, you don't understand is that this isn't true hero work anymore. And I think maybe to a certain extent you do understand where I'm coming from. But unfortunately, I'll do what I have to do. But I won't be coming back. He flies off and Aizawa questions what he means by I won't be coming back. And just as he flies over, he begins circling, cir circling looking for more and more villains, finding a couple, Toga, Dobby, Twice, 
Luckily, he's able to detain them, but unfortunately, eventually, he'll, they'll be able to get away through basically Kurogiri's warp portals. But the big thing is, is nobody actually got captured. Or at least that's what he thought. Until he hears about Bakugo Katsuki, his former, well, quote-unquote friend, getting taken away. He doesn't like the sound of this. He's going to make sure he gets him back, and that's a guarantee, telling his classmates that he'll do just that. He flies back up in the air and darts off toward the training camp once again. When he lands, Aizawa tells him that he's this is bad. What is he talking about? He's not going to show up. He's not going to come. But Azuku cuts him off. I'm done with this. This hero stuff it doesn't make sense. With power like this, me not doing anything makes no sense. So I'm going to do something with it. You wait. Azuku flies off and Shoka is close to follow, trying to keep up with him, but obviously his power and his level is far beyond almost every single being on this planet. So Azuku decides to leave. Shoka chases him down and when they land on a building, she questions what the hell he thinks he's doing. He tells her that she should go back, that she'll get in trouble otherwise. But she's not so sure if that's the best idea anyways. She just wants to hear the reasoning behind his, well, leap of absence here. And he just explains that he's going to go find Bakugo. He's going to save him. He's going to do whatever he can to make the world a safer place. And if that means breaking the rules a little bit, then that means breaking the rules. He doesn't care. He realizes that the power he has is something that cannot be contained. He cannot just limit himself. That he's just some student. No. He knows how strong he is. And he knows what he's capable of in terms of saving people. So that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Shoka understands and says that she wants to help. They are, or well, they were best friends in a past life. Azuku nods and says that they're going to be searching for Bakugo. But just as he says this, it seems Great Sage already has found his location. I already have found the location of this Bakugo Katsuki. He is actually pretty nearby. I'll, I'll tell you the location right now. Azuku waits as his eyes begin to adjust and he visualizes exactly where Bakugo is, finding out his location and taking off with Shoka. When they arrive, they come up with a slight plan to get him out, but Azuku decides that he's just going to bust through the front door. It's not like anybody's going to stop him. He kicks down the front door and begins to breathe his paralysis breath on all the villains around Bakugo, grabbing him, cutting him loose, and getting out of there in an instant, going off to an, a, another rooftop. Bakugo questions what the hell he thinks he's doing, and Azuku tells him to stop being so dumb and naive, and that he's just here to help. Look, stop being... I don't know. Stop being an idiot, okay? Just don't worry about it. Actually... I have someone else that I can bring here if, if need be. Shoka is confused at the remark that he just made just because, well, Azuku can sense something. Getting Bakugo out of there immediately, putting him near a ton, a ton, and when I mean a ton, of citizens in a nearby city. Azuku flies back and realizes that the arrival of All for One and the League of Villains is finally upon them. All for one wants his final showdown with All Might and wants to go head to head with the Titan. But Azuku wants to make sure that this fight is not fair. Everybody needs to get captured. They try to recover Bakugo, of course, but knowing that he's gone, long gone from now on, they can't do much about it. All for one tries to actually get everybody out of there using warp portals and basically teleporting the entirety of the League of Villains out of the area but Izuku immediately stops this with his magical powers and he just eliminates the warp portal entirely capturing all the villains and proceeds to knock all of them out and paralyzes all of them using his paralysis breath he looks up toward all for one and sees all might clashing with him knowing that all might may or may not be strong enough to actually finish the job Azuku arrives in front of all for one punching him square in the jaw slamming him back toward the ground just as all for one begins to crumble he begins to hurt Azuku calls in reinforcements immediately calling in Alfred the Nomu that he named not so long ago coming in and putting an end basically knocking out and capturing every last villain there. 
Just as Azuku is about to go and head off, someone, actually a group of heroes, stops him, telling him that he cannot leave, that he did some things that he shouldn't be allowed to do, that this is bad, that there is laws for a reason. But Azuku begins to float in the air. Look, none of you have the capabilities to stop me anyways. I wouldn't do this, trust me. I'll be seeing you all around. Just treat me how you want to treat me. Villain, vigilante, hero, I don't care. Azuku leaves and he's chased down by Shoka once again. And of course, Azuku tells her that she or that he doesn't want her to get in trouble, that it's time for him to go on his own and that he'll handle business elsewhere. But she actually changes her mind. She says that she wants to be whatever this is as well, that he's right. With this crazy power that they hold, they need to be able to use it and use it now. They can't be restricted and stopped by, by the law. It's kind of a waste. And without Izuku being there with the attack of All for One, damages would have been a lot worse. With an agreement made between the two of them, they start their vigilante work. They begin taking out villain after villain as if it were nothing really. They don't really miss school. Of course, everyone in their families, obviously Izuku's mother, and also Endeavor and other people are trying to contact them. Azuku though is in a place of power that he can kind of do whatever he wants. Luckily he's not a villain, because if he was, he'd be tearing everything apart. But he still visits his mother from time to time to see how she's doing. Shoko, Shoka fall, or comes with him to that place and also they visit their classmates every so often. But obviously they don't stay very long, they don't want to get caught, and frankly they don't want to be forced into a position where they have to fight heroes to get out of harm's way, or to get out of legal action. But their vigilante work continues on and on until they get wind of an invasion that is going to occur. An invasion on the base of the Shia Hazaikai. It seems like the Shia Hazaikai has a powerful leader for one, but also a powerful like weapon? They're not so sure, but it supposedly can eliminate quirks, and he doesn't understand it, but on the day of the invasion, he sees him and Shoka see a ton of people waiting outside the base. They both fly down and land next to them, and a lot of people question what the hell they think they're doing there, but they say they're here to help. If they want to cuff them up and try to put them away, they can try, but unfortunately, they're not going to stand a chance. Aizawa says that they can really use the help anyways, so they shouldn't really worry about it. Azuku agrees, so they decide to tag along in this fight with the Shia Hazaikai. Azuku immediately wanting to go after the boss, and that's exactly what he does. Him and Mirio blast through wall after wall. Mirio looks at him and questions why he would go to this extreme, and Azuku says that it's not extreme. That when he's as strong as well he is, they they don't realize how much he wants to do he can't wait he cannot take abide his time with the strength that he has and just watch people get hurt because of some law that's not true hero work true hero work is doing everything in your power to keep someone safe no matter what happens and that means saving as many people as possible even if the law forbids you to do so Muriel hearing this is kind of shocked at the reasoning but he understands where he's coming from. Shoka then shows up and they begin darting off to the room where Overhaul is currently holding a child. And that child, and Azuku and Shoka are informed of this, goes by the name of Eri, a child with tremendous power, overwhelming power at that. When they arrive, they see Overhaul waiting for them and about to leave with Eri. He immediately gets slapped to the ground, Azuku not wasting much time at all. Overhaul can feel the power behind the blows of Azuku, and Azuku paralyzes him immediately with his paralysis breath. Begins striking lightning on top of him, enough so that he's just, you know, out cold but not dead. But just as this is occurring, Azuku gets a bullet shot toward him, landing directly in his arm. Azuku can feel that his body is changing, twitching. The paralysis breath wears off, and Overhaul slightly recovers and get, stands up. Azuku is confused at what's even occurring. What the hell's happening to my body? 
Azuku doesn't realize this, but it seems that the cork erasing bullet is being put into effect. But Great Sage informs him. Yes, it seems that your cork is 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 going away. Oh no, that's not good. Shoka, this is serious now. Shoka steps up and begins fighting overhaul with Mirio. The the fight is still in their favor. They're outpacing them. But the fact that Azuku might be losing his cork is something bad. Great Sage, I know you're glitching out. I know it's freaking out. You need to somehow be able to analyze this bullet. Can we override it? Yeah, e yes, it seems that we can override it. Perfect. How do we do that? Immediately, Azuku is forced into slime form. It seems that the bullet can only be analyzed in a temporary time if he goes into stasis. Entering his slime form forces him to a sleep of some sort, and he begins analyzing the bullet to take effect in terms of his quirk. The analyzation even goes on further and further to the point that Overhaul is already defeated. Shoka and Mirio were able to handle it and save and save Eri. Of course, Azuku had a big part in that. Overhaul was already practically on his last legs when Azuku landed those blows. But still, at the end of the day, Azuku is in a horrible and very vulnerable state. Mirio says that they should take him to another place, take him to a hospital. But Shoka, Shoka believes that that shouldn't be the case, that don't worry about it. Immediately, other heroes come in and see that Azuku is vulnerable. But Aizawa says that they shouldn't take him now, that this isn't right. He's just a kid, a kid trying to do the proper thing. Aizawa begins to say this, but the other heroes don't listen. A lot of them try their best to basically get to Azuku, and Shoka is about to step up and actually fight. Mirio telling her that this is not the time to fight as well, that they can't fight each other. But Shoka says that Azuku has been a good hero, that if they take him in and try to imprison him, that, that she'll make sure that it doesn't happen. But just as she says this, Alfred comes darting in out of nowhere, picking up the slime form of Azuku. Oh, hello everybody. Sorry to intervene, but I'll be taking him. Azuku is then taken off by Alfred. Alfred is gone and Shoka quickly follows. A bunch of the heroes say they want to follow after him, but Aizawa says that that is a horrible idea. That for one, that Alfred guy is extremely powerful. Levels above All Might himself. Shoka may be still getting used to her powers, but that Alfred guy would flick them one time and they'd go into cardiac arrest. But Azuku's body would end up creating a response, helping him get out of the part and this terrifying moment. With Alfred and Shoka, they're completely fine. And this vigilante run will continue on. All for One is currently in prison, Shigaraki and the League of Villains put away forever. And it seems that Overhaul is put away as well. Is there more to do? Of course. Of course there is. For a vigilante and someone that wants to seek out and make sure all, and he means every single last bit of evil is gone, there's never going to be a time where he isn't going to be fighting. But nonetheless, that is for a story for another day, and that is the wrap up of Rimaru or Azuku Midoriya as Rimaru Tempest. And if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, sub, and comment down below. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying that My Hero stuff is back. Um, I'm kind of just doing it at my own leisure at this point. Like if I enjoy an idea, I'll do that idea. Um, I'm going to be doing a My Hero Academia What If on the Golden Kingdom channel. So you'll be seeing part one to that coming up relatively soon. So if you want to check out the Golden Kingdom channel, go check that out. It is in my uh, listed uh, channels um, on my YouTube channel page. So check that out. And I uh, hope all y'all have an amazing day. And if you do, that's great. And if you don't, I hope the next day is even better. So uh, I hope all y'all enjoyed. And I'll see y'all next time. Later.